For this project, I started with a 24 by 34 inch window that I had picked up at a garage sale for $5. It was a really good deal. It was uh, painted gray, but I decided I was going to paint it white. Now the window looked like it was sealed in there pretty well, but I still wanted to go ahead and put some painter's tape around the perimeter of the back of the window just as an extra precaution against resin leaks. Then I flipped it over and took painter's tape and put it around the perimeter of the uh, front of it because I'm going to paint it and that just helps uh, with cleanup. You don't get too much paint on the window panes. Although paint on window panes is easy to get off with a razor blade. And I did paint it white and then I actually ended up painting it blue and I didn't like it blue so then I painted it white again and it took several coats and then I took it out to the garage and I did um, distress it. I um, I do like the old window look so I, I took some of the paint back off. Sounds silly but I, I like the distressed look. So anyway you can see some of the old blue paint coming through in some areas so that's what that's from. So for this project I started with clear tumbled glass. As you can see, I have an abundance of it. This is glass I picked up at thrift stores and garage sales and tumbled in my tumbler. And I sprayed it with the Krylon stained glass spray paint, the color cranberry red. And it turns out to this beautiful red color. So somebody had messaged and asked if anybody knew how to make poppies. And it got me thinking, well, Maybe I'll try to make some poppies. That would be cute for a project. So I started out with my red petals and I used this Lexel, which a lot of people use for um, mosaics. They use it for glass on glass mosaics because it dries clear. And I assembled the petals and I kind of propped, I had to prop everything up to get it to hold. And then I took some beads and put in them, them in the middle to make it look like a poppy. So the first one was Lexel, and then the second one I used was silicone caulk, regular silicone, clear silicone caulk. And um, again, I assembled the flowers and I propped all sorts of things up under it to kind of hold the petals up so that they were in a um, curved fashion like a poppy flower would be. And then I let these dry overnight. And you can see I have all sorts of things holding each of the edges up so that they don't go flat on me. This one I even have a tape dispenser holding it up and, and other pieces of glass. So anyway, I, uh, like I said, I let them dry overnight. And um, these are the two flowers the next day. And the one with the Lexel is nice and clear on the bottom as you can see, and once you pour resin around that, you won't even notice the back of that. The only problem with the Lexel is it was flexible. It wasn't stiff, so the petals kind of went, went back down a little bit, whereas the other one dried nice and stiff. And um, the one with this, and it did not stick to the silicone mat. So this is the one that I had the silicone caulk, clear silicone caulk, and it's really a mess on the back, and it stuck to the silicone mat. Um, you can see what a mess it is, but it did dry solid. Next, I decided to put the poppies together a different way, and I got the tops to the Ashland Decorative Filler. I think I even got a pickle jar top. I have this little bowl, and I cut out little squares from the silicone mat and put them in the center so that when I poured resin on it, it wouldn't stick. And honestly, this took me probably about 45 minutes to assemble them all to find just the right pieces that I wanted for the project. And then I mixed up my resin, and I started drizzling the resin over the um, center of them to hold them together. And then I took beads, the black beads again, and I put those in the very center of it. And I can always add more when I resin the project. So the two in the back there are the Lexel and the silicone ones, and these are all the resin ones. And they turned out real nice. They came right off of the mat, crystal clear on the bottom. Once resin's on, if, I'm going to do this glass on glass, and once the resin's on there, you won't be able to notice it um, from the back at all. And they came right off of the uh, silicone mats, and um, 
I think they turned out cute. Surprisingly, some of the resin got into those uh, little tops and it actually popped right out of there. So maybe you could actually just do it in those tops. I don't know. I, th I was really surprised, but it did come right out. So a few of them I thought needed a few more petals. So I took some E6000 and I added a couple more petals to three or four of the flowers and I thought that made them look better. I let that dry overnight. So to make the stems for the poppies, I actually used these beads. These beads I had picked up at a garage sale. They were actually a bead, part of a bead curtain. So I took the curtain apart and I sprayed it with Krylon stained glass spray paint, the color summer green, and it came out this beautiful green color. And I used these for the stems. So the reason I chose to use these beads for the stems is the poppy stems are real long and thin, and you can cut stained glass fairly thin, but I didn't think I was going to be able to cut it that thin. So that's why I chose to use the beads, and I think they um, really look pretty that way. And vitrograph glass would be your next bet, but vitrograph glass is very curvy, and the most you would get is maybe one to two inches of a straight line, and you would have to piece it all together. So that's why I chose to use these beads. And what I did was I took fishing line, and I strung them on fishing line. And then I, um, after I got the length that I wanted, I tied the knots at both sides, but then I laid them down on this um, silicone mat and I put a little dot of the clear Elmer's glue at each side so that later on after it dried, I'd be able to snip off the knots that I made because you don't wanna see knots at the end of your stems. So next I start assembling everything. I lay out the flowers and I lay out the stems and I do use a little bit of glue to kind of glue um, each end of the stems to kind of hold it in place a little bit. And um, I did also make some flat flowers as you can see. I made a couple on this and I add some more after. Um, th that are not three-dimensional. They're a little bit more flat. And then for the black part of it, I used a stone, a black stone that I had picked up a bag of them at like the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby or something like that. I also add a few buds to it. And then um, <clears throat> you'll notice that I've run, run out of the already strung beads so I start to just lay out the beads with glue. I run a line of glue and then put the beads on top of it and if I had to do it again I would um, do it just that way because um, it, it just made, was much easier and I used the clear Elmer's glue which doesn't dry super fast but it does leave it very clear. Next, I took some stained glass because I wanted to make some other um, stems. And I didn't realize I could make these stems so skinny, but I'm still not sorry that I made the poppy stems out of the beads. I think they look really cute and they're very curvy. So I'm not an expert stained glass cutter, but I did learn to cut stained glass by watching YouTube videos. So if you want to learn to cut stained glass, it's a great way to learn and it's free. So uh, these stems that I cut out of stained glass are, of course, way too thin to tumble in a tumbler. They just break apart. And I did cut them real short or shorter than the poppy stems. And what I did was I put pink tumbled glass to make up the flowers. And again, this is glass that I've broken up and tumbled myself, glass I've picked up from garage sales and thrift stores. And this glass is pink all the way through. It is not painted glass. Next, I started adding black stones to the bottom of the project. They're the same black stones that I used to put at the bottom of the flatter poppies that I had added after. And again, these are stones that I've picked up in bags. Uh, you can get them from the Dollar Tree, you can get them from Hobby Lobby, Michaels has them. And then after I was done with that, I started adding, um, I had broken up the stained glass that I had cut real thin into shorter pieces and I started adding that to the very bottom so that I could add some more flowers.
I made the little white flowers out of this mosaic accents glass pebbles that I had picked up at Hobby Lobby. And I just made little tiny white flowers at the top of each of those little green stems that I put on there. Then I started adding a few more flowers and again I made a line of glue down where I thought the stem should go and I put the little beads uh, on top of the line of glue to form the stem. A lot of times when I um, am making something I'll get so far in it and then I'll wait till the next day and look at it again and see what I think it might need. You know sometimes I just sleep on it. Um, I have one idea and a lot of times once I get going I end up changing it but I did end up adding a few more flowers and stems to this. I also put little red beads in the center of the white flowers and uh, of course added a couple more flowers. <laughs> I think I started out with about seven flowers and ended up with a, a dozen or so. Anyway, um, next I took some green glass and green tumbled glass and made some leaves on the pink flowers. And then I took some little green beads that were um, part of the bead curtain and um, that I had sprayed green and put little um, beads next to the white flowers to make it look like leaves. And then after that, I took some green glass. This is Dollar Tree glass, a lighter color green than I usually use, and put that just above the black rocks just to kind of fill it in and finish it off. And next I decided we needed some butterflies. So I took this glass. It's a very, very thin glass. And I'd actually broke this plate by accident. I was going to put something on it, use it as the um, background for glass. <laughs> but it broke by accident. So I um, ended up nipping it with my nipper tool and making some butterfly wings with it. And I ended up um, adding three butterflies to the very top of the project. In the red glass that I have for the center of the butterfly's body is actually red tumbled glass that just happened to break up in that way. Glass when you smash it breaks up in all different ways and this just happened to break up um, this way. Once I had mixed up the resin I started drizzling it over all of the glass pink glass um, is very light and when you put it's already translucent and when you put resin over pink glass it makes it even more translucent. Um, I probably should have kept the pink glass off, put the resin down first and then put the pink glass on top of it without pouring resin on top and it would have um, been a little bit more visible. Anyway I spread the resin out and used my gloved hand to kind of make sure everything was covered real good and then I used the little kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles and of course I ended up coming back to it multiple times getting rid of bubbles. I use a toothpick to kind of straighten all the glass out and make sure it's exactly where I want it and um, mess around with it for a few minutes. Next I start putting the resin on the top part of the window and I'm you'll notice I'm going around the perimeter first. You really they say it's self leveling but you really have to um, move it around yourself and make sure it gets into the all the crevices and corners. I started putting the resin over the butterfly wings. I started noticing it was too translucent. So I took this Ashland decorative filler. It's kind of a pink uh, reflective glass and I sprinkled it over the wings of the each of the uh, butterflies and I thought that made it uh, look prettier plus um, they were more made them more visible because they really kind of disappeared into the background with the resin over it. And then next I kind of just did some finishing touches. I put the rest of the resin on. Um, I took some more of the little beads to put in the center of the poppies and use the kitchen torch and just finished it off. And when it's done it has to sit on a level surface, a level flat surface overnight and I believe it takes a total of 24 hours to completely set. I also had pulled apart an old necklace and used the seed beads and the little round beads to make the antennae for the butterfly. 
temperatures between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's in your best interest to put a dust cover over it so that there's no particles that get into it while it's setting. And after I turned the camera off, I actually ended up going back in and putting some of the same Ashland decorative filler that I had put on the butterflies on top of the pink glass because that pink glass was just so translucent, it was just fading into the background. Hey everyone. So I have this uh, piece of paper behind it so you could see what it would look like on a wall. And um, this was really a two-step process with, you know, having to form these before. But I thought that was really cool. I've never done anything like that before. And I actually have another project coming up where um, I do that with some other flowers. But um, I ended up putting this glass over this because these were just, you couldn't even see them. They were just kind of um, disappearing into the background. So um, that's, that's just the bad thing about real light pink glass. And part of it was my fault because I put the resin on top of it. Probably if I had just put the resin around it or put the resin down first and then put the little piece of pink glass on top of the resin and not covered it with resin, they would have been a little bit more visible. But it is, you know, it, the pink is just so light. And uh, that's the color that I wanted to add to this. So I'm hoping you can see this. To me, I can see this um, Ashland decorative filler on top of it a lot, a lot better. And unfortunately, the, <laughs> the little pieces of pink glass are behind it. You can't really see those. But um, I really like the way it turned out. Um, I hope you guys did. I love to see what you're working on. I, I love to hear from you. If um, my email address is under my about information, you can send pictures that way. And um, I get, you know, I get all sorts of ideas from other people's ideas. And if there's anything that you want me to try, this was actually, the reason I ended up trying this was because somebody had messaged, somebody had left a comment and then under that comment, somebody said, um, hey Sammy, Somebody had said, uh, does anyone know how to make poppies? And I thought, oh, no. And so I started looking up, you know, what poppies look like. And the only thing I could find, like on Etsy or um, Pinterest, was these the flat poppies like that. Nobody had done them uh, more three-dimensional. So I thought, whoa, that will be a challenge. So anyway, that's how I ended up doing that. And... Um, Oh, and I wanted to show you, I got some, a few good garage sale finds. Now, it's getting so hot around here. Yesterday, I think it went up to like 97, and it feels even hotter. So um, there's fewer and fewer garage sales during the summer, but I, I still did find a couple of good things. So I just wanted to show you. So I got, um, I got these two mirrors. Well, they're part mirrors, part pictures, and I thought I could do something with them. I don't know, maybe leaving it with the mirror at the bottom and then taking the picture off of the back and doing something, some kind of glass art there. Well, I could even do palm trees, glass art, palm trees, some kind of a tropical scene or something. But I thought these were a good deal. They were two for five dollars, so two fifty each. And, you know, I'll probably have to paint them up and everything. They're a little bit scratched up, clean them up. But I thought that was a pretty good deal. And then um, I got this mirror here, which I, this one was $3. And I thought that was a really good deal. And, um, of course, it needs to be painted in that. But $3, I could think of a lot of different things to do on that. And um, so those were the best things. But um, I did get this green glass. Let me get glasses in there. Does anybody else have a hundred pairs of Dollar Tree glasses sitting around and you can never find them? Okay, so I found this uh, green bowl. This is great for leaves and that to tumble. This was one dollar, so I couldn't pass that up. And I did end up paying two dollars for this bracelet, which I usually don't pay that much, but look at the, um, their individual things to put so I could put this in the middle of flowers. 
I could use a bunch of the same flowers and have the same centers for each of them. Um, I thought that that was real pretty. And I did end up paying $2 for that, but I thought that was worth it. And um, the only other thing I got, like I said, there wasn't that many garage sales, was this pretty frame for 50 cents. And um, I'm looking for frames for Christmas trees now. And I thought that would be real pretty with the gold. And of course, all this will come off and it'll just be the glass. But um, anyway, I, I have a lot of frames, but I don't, sometimes 50 cents, how can you pass it up? <laughs> anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. And if you want to be notified of future videos, subscribe and you'll be notified. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.